Dirt, and I'm originally from the Midwest, Wichita, Kansas, and I moved to Atlanta in 1996, and uh, it's been my home pretty since. You know, being from the Midwest, I I knew I, you know, I, I, I came from I wanted to be around more black people, and uh, so I knew I wanted to go to school in the South and going to colleges. I really kind of the education, I want to get education and everything, but I kind of use college as a way to get out, and I knew that's something my parents can get behind. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I came to the A uh, to really, or to the South in general, to get more of a cultural, rich experience that I was kind of looking for at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at that time, uh, I was an artist my whole life, and I always did art, but growing up in the time that I grew up in initially, I just wasn't just out loud, I'm an artist, even though I was. And it was really because it was just an uber masculine era. It was different than it is now. Like being an artist now is cool and all this, and you can write poetry. Back in the day, you would look at it soft back then. So so even though I was an artist, but you know, like a lot of my gangbanger buddies and stuff, I, I would just always say, I'm a person that did artwork. But all of my people would always introduce me. This is Gene, he's an artist. But it took me a little bit of maturity to say out loud, I'm an artist. Because uh, initially when I first went to school, I just went to Southern University that really didn't have a good art program. But then after a year there, I really said, yo, I just need to tunnel vision and focus on my art. So that's when I moved to Atlanta and, and attended uh, SCAD. We're cranking out the work, you know, it's not enough sales. There's a lot of sales, but there's not a lot of high uh, dollar sales, you know, which is what we all want to get to, that five, 10 grand, 15 grand sales are not, they're few and far between. Uh, I don't really know, because if I knew the answer, I would definitely, (laughs) that would be my mission. But I just think that it's, it's growing from when I came in 96 and had my eyes open. There's a lot more, uh, it's a lot more trending in that direction. And I think it just it's just something that's just gonna take time. Uh, if we keep doing quality work, uh, quality shows, uh, it'll happen. But uh, it, it's, 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 a, it's one of those uh, puzzling things that I think we all try to figure out, but it, it's definitely growing. Uh, I just think uh, avenues like this, press help fuel that. Uh, if a lot more people get behind it. You got a lot of people like in New York that's champion arts, uh, as far as black, like a Swiss Beats and everything. It's, it's, and we got a lot of celebrities here, uh, but uh, to me, there's not a lot of them championing the arts. I see them championing certain individuals, but there's no one that's putting a big spotlight on it uh, that people follow. Uh, so hopefully that'll change because that, that makes a big difference. You know, if you got some celebrity backing there, some people backing it because people like hype, that helps fuel it too. But no one in Atlanta is really picking up that flag, even though I know there's a lot of uh, celebrity art collectors, but it's more low key. They're not like shining that light isn't uh, enough to me that would help fuel it. But a lot of the artists here are DIY type cats. Uh, like even myself, like there was there's not a there wasn't enough representation for black art galleries. So guess what? We we make our galleries. You know that's the attitude of Atlanta that I see as opposed to a lot of other places. Uh, we're not really sitting on our hands as far as the artists, but we need other people to help us fuel it to really bring those dollars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, even when I went to school, I studied graphic design and got my BFA in graphic design. So that's how I ate for like 15 years, even though I was still doing art, but I decided like, okay, if I'm going to do this design, I need to be true to it. So I, I, I really honed in on my design for a few years and just did art, you know, for the love. Uh, so there's graphic design, there's uh, front-end web design, videography, photography, a uh, little bit of creative writing, uh, uh, screen printing. I started a screen printing business, uh, curate art shows. I mean, it's a lot. It's so much that I'm trying to taper it down. Man, you just saw my first business card. <laughs> my first business card had everything on there. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's just how you got to do. But I, I enjoy that because... Anything that I do or anything that I hire people even to help me with, I can also do myself. I don't feel I don't want to feel like uh, if things don't work out with someone that I can't do it. I can get in and get my hands dirty. So uh, it helps me even market my shows and do all that stuff. But but yeah, man, uh, fine art is, is is was honestly before it was low. Fine art is definitely at the top. All those other things are now second fiddle to to me being.
artist. I think it's more my personality. I think that's how I was raised. My mom was always a DIY person, you know, my family in general. I mean, some of my uncles, I mean, they bought land and built their own house and learned stuff while doing it. And seeing my mom around the house from laying down towel and all that type of stuff, that's kind of within my DNA. And also, uh, some of it is just some control issues too as a creative. You know, you have a vision and I want to execute my vision and sometimes it's hard for me to articulate my vision to people. Uh, and some of it is just out of necessity and just curiosity. Uh, it's just really, I like learning new stuff. I mean, that's just kind of the way I am. Uh, and it's also, when I have a vision, all of my visions aren't painted. You know, some of my visions are moving pictures, which is video. Some of them is photography. So I, I got all these things in my head that I just really want to get out. So I don't need to really be an expert at these things. Uh, you know, I kind of pick the things that I want to really master, but I have interest just in a lot of different stuff. Um, and so I think it just spoils, it just comes, comes from curiosity and then a necessity. And when I was from, you know, if I had a show, it's not just the art. I have a way that yeah, I, I wanted to be marketed and I have all of this. And then at the time when I first started, it wasn't about not even being able to find someone. I can afford nobody, you know? So, and then, uh, so I just did it myself and just picked up on all these things. Uh, uh, being an art dealer is, well, I, 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 I wasn't even looking for a gallery when I got a gallery. I was just looking for a studio here at Fort Mac. Uh, and just a gallery presented itself to, to me. So it was a space big enough to have my studio and the art gallery. So I wasn't even on the mind frame of really having a gallery at the time. It was something I always wanted to do later. But when the opportunity came, I just kind of jumped on it. So I wasn't like really going in super prepared. Uh, and I just went on the faith that, okay, let's, let's just run this. So I really didn't have uh, a distribution list or no people that initially I can reach out, which is on grassroots social media. So, you know, that's it's just something that's just going to happen organic. And those things just have to have time to mature. So, but being an art dealer and what I learned is, man, it's all about quality work. It's all about being passionate about what you do. The art, you got to have passion in the art because it's tough. And people kind of see that. And then it's, it's just about paying attention to details and create, uh, not only curating shows, curating an experience that people just want to come to and, and people want to support that and then it's just because I, because I come from a marketing background too it's just always doing an analysis of yourself of your show of this and figuring out how to work it sometimes your biggest supporters or your big income people aren't going to come from social media they're going to come from email so you got to do a whole lot of stuff and figure out what works like you'll get a lot of people off the ground but the people who really are going to come to break bread, they're going to want to sign a guest list and get an email notification. So it's just figuring that out over time and, uh, and just making them feel like uh, what they have is important and have value. Uh, I mean, because I bought art from, from galleries before and sometimes it just is what it is, but it wasn't the same like when they just handed it to me. You know, it's different when you wrap it and do all of this. It makes it seem like, yo, this is precious. You got to sell that whole thing and have them buy into it that, yo, this is this is valuable what you got here. And if you act that way, those people see it. Because where I, I'm almost like an incubator gallery. I, I, I have a lot of new art collectors. Like, So I have a lot of first-time art collectors. I have some season, but, you know, we kind of, because I'm a new gallery, I get a lot of first-time art collectors. So their first experience in purchasing art is, is through Future Gallery a lot of times. So I, I feel even a bigger responsibility to give them a good experience because, you know, that is, you hardly, you hardly have anyone that just buys one paint. So I want that first experience for them to be enjoyable so we can grow this collector base out here.